All my life, my mom has always unwillingly been a magnet for paranormal activity. She never spoke of it. She thought of it as a curse that plagued her. Once, at around two in the morning, I found her sitting at the dining room table, sitting stock still, smoking cigarette after cigarette, staring into the living room with all the lights off. The cigarette smoke was settling at about the halfway point in the room, so it looked like a low stagnant cloud, adding to the suddenly alarming feel of the space. I called out to her, but she didn't respond. She just sat there, the ember of the Marlboro brightening in every drag. You could hear the crisp sound of the burning tobacco as she inhaled. I just stood there, arms crossed, chilled from the night air, looking at her in confusion. Mom? Mom, are you okay? She just sat there, silent, stoic, staring at nothing. Another drag, and then finally she said something. And they just walk through. They just walk through here. I don't know where they're going. I scanned the room, goosebumps shivering up my arms. Who, Mom? Nothing. I was young and fairly creeped out, so I just backed up slowly and quietly went back to bed, closing and locking my bedroom door. The next morning, I asked her what that was all about, and she acted like it was nothing. Like I had some bad dream and thought it was real. She completely played it off like I was crazy to think that she would do something like that. And oh, by the way, you know I quit smoking six months ago. Stuff like that happened all the time. These little incidents that she was part of but would never acknowledge once they happened. I know she had some gift or power or something, but she never actually told me about it. I think because she hoped whatever it was wouldn't find an attachment to her sons. Well, it did anyway. It was my first year back from college. I was asleep in my bed, briefs only, the morning sunlight streaming into my room and waking me from my dreams. It was bright and warm. I could still feel the way the sun felt on my skin that morning as I lay on my stomach, blankets thrown asunder by the vigorous sleeper that I was. The day was going to be beautiful, and I was thinking about what I would do first after breakfast. I was facing the wall opposite the doorway of my room, staring at the Cocoon movie poster I loved so much, when I heard my bedroom door creak open. Mom, checking in on me before she headed to work. Only, suddenly, something felt off. I could hear the door opening. I knew the sound of that door as well as I knew every creak and groan of this house that I grew up in. I knew what it sounded like when it was opened all the way, but it didn't open all the way. It stopped suddenly. It was like the minute that I felt something was off, the door just stopped opening. Like lightning, a wave of terror rushed through my body, washing through me like an icy wave of water. I was fully awake instantly and paralyzed in fear, completely paralyzed. It wasn't my mom, I knew it. Whatever it was, it was not my mom. I couldn't move, I couldn't yell, I just lay there completely terrified. Then, it started moving towards me. I could hear the steps on the carpet. My heart was pounding so hard that I thought it would burst. I was so scared. Tears started streaming from my eyes. I could feel it stop, hovering over me, looking down. I kept praying it wouldn't touch me. Please, just don't touch me. I could feel it reaching out, its arm extending, moving to rest a hand on the small of my back. I managed to close my eyes and decided I wasn't going to let this happen. I was going to count to three, gather all of my strength, and jump up and scream. I was going to break this paralysis. As I made this decision, I felt the arm stop. It stopped right over my body. I felt the presence freeze, so I gathered all of my energy and tried to count to three and move, but I was still so scared that nothing happened. I barely moved an inch. I closed my eyes again and focused harder than I ever had on anything in my life, 
and managed to roll myself off the bed and squeak out a meager yelp. It was enough, though. I hit the ground hard, breathing heavy and sweating from either fear or the suddenly hot sunlight streaming through my window. My bedroom door was closed. There was nothing around me. The presence was gone. I threw open the door and ran up the stairs into the living room where my mom was getting ready to go to work. No, you're up. I was just about to go down there and say good morning. Bright, cheery. You weren't just in my room, checking on me or something? Wiping sweat from my forehead, completely confused. She gave me an odd look. No, for God's sakes, put some clothes on. I'll see you tonight. And she was gone. That was the first time. Since then, it's followed me everywhere I go. I don't feel it all the time. Sometimes years go by, but it always comes back. I don't know if I will ever find out what it is. My mom passed two years ago, and with her gone, I can only hope that she tries to protect me from whatever it is. This isn't the only experience I've had, either. It's just one that profoundly affected me. At first, I thought it was a sleep issue, but the problem is I was awake the whole time. I remember seeing the wall, the poster, the bright room, feeling the sheets underneath me, the smell of the fabric softener. I'm no fool. The first thought I had was that it was a dream, but I was going through the logic of what was happening to me and knew that it wasn't. That, coupled with our family's history, my mom's experiences, my experiences, I knew something was happening. We traveled everywhere, all over the world and the country, and I think we picked something up somewhere and I think my mom knew about it. This wasn't the first thing that's happened. This was just the biggest. Let me tell you about our house on Park Place in Florida. That's where I began to think my mom had secrets that she didn't want to share. My freshman year of high school, my friends and I were really into playing with Ouija boards. I was always skeptical of whether or not they actually worked until this experience. My friends and I had gotten word that a few people at our school had started a paranormal club. I know it sounds stupid, but this was actually a thing at my high school. We were all pretty excited to hear about this since we were all into that type of stuff. A group of about nine of us decided to go to the first meeting held after school one day. When we showed up to the room where the meeting was held, we were surprised to find that it was just us and a few others, as well as the two girls that had started the club and the teacher chaperoning the meeting. One of the girls who started the club announced that, for our first meeting, we were going to be watching an episode of Ghost Adventures, since it had some good paranormal encounters. My friends and I were pretty bummed that we were just watching a TV show, and we expected to be doing something totally different. About ten minutes into the episode, me and four of my other friends got bored since we were only 14 to 15 at the time, and couldn't leave until our parents picked us up. We decided to go hang out in one of our favorite teacher's rooms. His room was across the hall from the classroom the paranormal club was being held in. We told the teacher that we were at the paranormal club across the hall, and how we joined because we were into playing with Ouija boards. So my friend had the bright idea that we should play one in his room, since she knew how to make them. Our teacher was reluctant at first, but eventually let us do it. My friend grabbed a piece of paper and pen, scribbled down yes, no, and the letters and numbers, and we got a makeshift planchette. I think we used like a quarter or something. We sat down at the table and started the game. We asked it, are you there? And it slowly slid to yes. Then we asked, what is your name? It first slid to D, then O, and then N. We quickly slid to goodbye, since this wasn't our first time coming in contact with the spirit named Dawn. So, a little backstory. This Dawn spirit had come through on multiple occasions when my friend Megan would play with the Ouija board. He would say he was one of her family members who had passed, but 
Upon asking her parents if they had a deceased relative named Dawn, they assured her they did not. So whenever Dawn came on the Ouija board, we knew to just slide to goodbye and not talk to him, since we thought he was bad news. Right as we told Dawn goodbye, the paranormal club leader had burst into the classroom saying that they had been looking for us and asking why we were ditching our meeting. One of them walked closer to where we were sitting and saw the Ouija board. She started scolding us, telling us to not mess with Ouija boards because there are bad spirits. We assured her that we knew what we were doing since we had done this so many times before. The girl sighed and let us get on with our game. She turned around to leave the room, but before she walked out, she told us about a girl who went to our high school in the 90s or something, and said she died nearby. She asked us if we were going to play with the Ouija board, and if we could find out this girl's name. We agreed, and both girls left the room. I'd like to emphasize the fact that none of us knew this girl's name, let alone that there was a girl who died near the school. We thought it would be pretty cool if we could find out her name through the board, but didn't expect much. We then asked the Ouija board again, is anyone there? It stalled for a minute, and then slowly crept to yes. They asked something along the lines of, there was a student who died here, what was her name? And there was a long pause, and then the game piece started to move. It slid first to S, then A, R, A, H. Sarah? We all froze for a moment. My friend Megan broke the silence eventually, by asking the board, And what's your name? It spelled out D-O-N. We once again slid the planchet to goodbye as fast as we could. We then started joking about Megan's so-called relative, Dawn, and how he always tried to mess with us. A few minutes passed, and the leader from the paranormal club came into our classroom from across the hall. She said, Hey guys, we did some research on the internet and we figured out the girl's name. It was Sarah. All of our jaws dropped. I immediately started getting goosebumps. I'd like to remind you that none of us had any prior knowledge of this girl who passed away since it had happened around 20 years prior. We told her that Sarah was the name we got when we asked the Ouija board. She got excited and told me and my friends to follow her across the hall. We looked at the computer that she had been doing her research on, and sure enough, Sarah's obituary was pulled up on the screen. She was struck by a car while attempting to cross the main road near our school. The girl also said, and this chilled me to my core, that she found another obituary for a janitor who worked at my high school in the 90s and committed suicide. His name? Dawn. My grandma's house has always, for as long as I can remember, been a scary place. My dad and aunt and uncle all grew up in the house and had paranormal experiences occur throughout their lives. One example was when my dad and uncle were teenagers. My uncle was walking down the steps and was swinging a towel, he had just washed his hair, when out of nowhere my dad, who was standing in the living room at the bottom of the stairs, saw the towel straighten out in front of my uncle as if someone had pulled on it, and my uncle fell forcefully down the stairs. Now. My grandma hates all things paranormal, especially Ouija boards, and she would often visit gypsies, so it's a big no-no in our family to discuss the paranormal events that occurred in her house. Twenty years or so ago, my cousins and brothers were playing in the upstairs bedrooms of my grandparents' house. The toys were set up in the room across the hall from them and they were all in the same bedroom playing a board game. Out of nowhere, a Hot Wheels car, with no batteries, no wind-up, just an average Hot Wheels car, slowly exited the room that the toys were in, went across the hall, and into the room where they were all sitting. Needless to say, they were all terrified. 
Around eight years ago, my oldest brother moved into the basement of the house. One night, he was home alone, and he woke up out of a deep sleep, having felt like he was shaken by someone. He stood up and instantly smelled gas. He went upstairs and outside the house. Later, he found out there was a carbon monoxide leak, and if he had not woken up, there was a big chance he could have died in his sleep. Months after that, when my grandparents were away for the weekend, the family decided to try the Ghost Radar app in their house. We all sat around the phone and my uncle asked the normal questions. Is anyone here? Blah blah. Then he asked, who used to live in the basement? At this point, my brother had already moved out. The Ghost Radar replied with my brother's full first name, which no one ever calls him, we were shocked, so my uncle asked, How did you save my brother? It replied with, Wake. Um, what the hell? He then asked, What did you save him from? And it said, Gas. Needless to say, we were shocked. The last thing that I'm going to talk about that happens in the house is my grandparents' friend's obituary, who passed away probably 15 years ago, will show up in their kitchen every month or so. They usually say hello to their friend and put the obituary back in the basement where it's supposed to stay. A little while later, it'll show up back in the kitchen. Sorry that was long, but there's more stories. Thanks for all the support on this post, I'm glad my family's experiences interest you. I did want to say that when I use the word gypsy, I'm not meaning it as a slur or derogatory term. My grandma would visit gypsies in the 70s and 80s, and has always had nothing but kind things to say about them. She respects them extensively. She's always used that word, so that's what I know them by. I don't mean to offend anyone, so I'm sorry if my use of that word in the story upset you. I would never intend to. When I was 17, and I'm 24 now, I visited a cemetery at night with a small group of friends. We were just going to look at the graves, give a little love to the graves that looked like maybe no one had visited them anymore, because they were from so long ago. We were not going there to hurt anything or mess around with the graves because we were, most of us still are, very spiritual, but not religious. I had always liked cemeteries, and feel a kind of peace when I'm in one, so I was very comfortable there and relaxed. I think that may be why what happened, happened at all. I was following near the back of the group, lingering on some graves to read what was written, when everything, for me, just goes blank. The rest of what happens is what my friends told me about hours later. <laughs> Hey, this one's mine, I called to the next nearest person in my group. He turned around to laugh and tell me to quit playing around when he stopped. I shouldn't have died, really, it wasn't my fault. Wait, what do you mean? He asked, getting my other friends to stop and walk back to me. Well, you see, I was playing in the barn with the kittens, and a man came in with a gun and bang! I don't think they would have believed I wasn't the one speaking if the voice coming out of me hadn't been so much higher pitched and had a very, very, very country accent. I don't know why he did it. He was my daddy's best friend. For the next two hours, I led them around the cemetery, pointing out graves and telling them about the people buried there like I knew them. One of my friends had had her phone out to use as a flashlight and recorded everything I was saying so that they could fact-check when we got back to the house we were staying at. Eventually, I stopped again, frowning at a headstone. This is my brother. He got to live a long, long time. It's not fair. I wanted to live too. I said, stomping my foot before just collapsing on the ground. I didn't wake up until we got home that night and I remember I had the worst headache of my whole life. 
My friends showed me the video and we all looked up as much as we could on the internet to see if I had been right. I was right about everything except one thing. The grave I collapsed on hadn't been the brother of the girl who had supposedly possessed me. He'd been the son of her father's best friend. The same best friend who she said shot her. I've never been back to that cemetery since. I'm afraid a little girl won't be the one to possess me this time. I saw a black-eyed child in my dream. Can anyone help interpret what this means? Should I be concerned? I haven't heard back from the other subreddits that I tried asking. In this dream, I lived with my parents, but for some reason the exact same house that I live in now, my boyfriend's. There was a young girl that had the room across from mine. She only came out at night. Mom and Dad didn't know about her, and she may have been a black girl, but I don't recall too much detail about hair. I think that she had some at the beginning of my nightmare, but not toward the end. I couldn't actually tell her real skin color, because everything was illuminated by a blue light. She didn't speak, but I'd been alright with her. Maybe I viewed her as peaceful at one point, but near the end I started to fear her. I walked out of my bedroom, and it was the dead of night, to her in the living room with the TV on static. I wanted to sleep in the living room, so I had her go back to her room so I could. She did. But I couldn't sleep because not long after, I heard her slam the bathroom door. It was an angry slam. I felt fear. So I grabbed the Xbox and I went to her bedroom and gave her the Xbox. I was hoping it would distract her long enough. She tried to give it back, pushing it back toward my hands when I gave it to her, but I insisted that she have it. Then I saw her eyes. I don't think I mentioned what her eyes were. I think they were either completely black or black everywhere except the corners, and the corners were white, but that may also have been a reflection of light off of her eyes. I could tell that she was angry. So I ran to my parents' bedroom and my dad was sleeping with his arms hanging off the bed. I was worried that if I looked at him it would be her. I was so afraid that I had my eyes closed. I merely felt his fingers to see if they were his. I was too scared to scream so I was saying through my lips while scared out of my mind, Dad? Dad? And I think I might have been saying it out loud, but I woke up feeling my boyfriend's fingers. I'm just curious, does this mean there's a spirit nearby? And if so, what should I do? <laughs> ah yes, good old paranormal stories. Where this channel began, and a topic that seems to be a favorite among all of you lovely people. I hope you enjoyed this collection of paranormal stories. I know I did. Thank you to all the Redditors that let me use their stories. Greatly appreciate it. And thank you to all of you for listening. If you did enjoy this and would like more content like this or content that is nothing like this. Like comparing eating an Oreo to smashing your foot with a hammer. Please consider joining the Nevermore by subscribing and hitting that bell icon. You can also support the Nevermore by following me on social media, or supporting me through Patreon Coffee, all optional, and every bit of it greatly appreciated. All that said, friends, I hope you have a beautiful day. I hope you're just doing well out there. Really, I really do hope you're doing well. Um, yeah. Anyway, all that said, uh, see you in the next video. Much love, and until then, sleep well.